that tonight I get to talk about something that I've been wanting to talk about for a long time. But the problem is people have been asking me this question about this guy. And I don't want to be uh, the one to say anything publicly that could lead to the doxing of one of my uh, ex-guests. Uh, Frame Games. Frame Games has been with us for so many so many shows and he, I think he's one of the example of an exemplar guest who was coming on my show and delivering really a whole thesis. It was very worked, his presentation. He was showing us stuff that was extremely interesting um, and he's been doxxed recently and the thing is, he's tried to market himself under his real name, Mike Benz, which I'm saying at this point because it's in the mainstream media. So it's not like, at this point, my intervention doesn't change this. But back in the days, uh, people have been asking me for three, four months, Jeff, the, don't, you real, don't you recognize it's the same voice? It's like, I'm not going to answer to you this question. You're looking to have a confirmation. And, and I, I didn't even know for sure. It's like, oh, the, does it sound like the, the voice of Frame Games? Maybe. Uh, and honestly, it's a, I, I have no way to check this. It's like, I've never been interested at doxing Frame Games. I've never been interested at knowing the real name of my guest. I present them uh, in the way they present themselves to me. So back in the days, Frame Games had been doing a lot of expose that were very powerful against uh, against a lot of uh, th there was some of the Jewish black collaboration. The whole idea of an alliance between the Jews and the blacks using kind of minority oriented uh, recruitment of this whole diversity and inclusion. Uh, modern type of legal system and policies. He talked to us, Frame Games, also about the real estate crisis and how, how he believes that ultimately it was caused by an abuse of a willingness to lend to people who shouldn't be lended to. In other words, it was an indirect effect of policies of diversity which were forcing banks on the one hand, they were, they were saying, banks, we will sue you, we will sue the hell out of you if you don't lend to a diverse crowd of people. And by lending to a diverse crowd, they ended up lending to people that even the banks could know would not be able to pay back on their mortgage. And so it's a form of socialization of uh, the economic incapability of payment and of, of having a productive life enough that would justify having a house. Uh, and it's being socialized still as of today, I believe, largely toward productive white people. Basically, there is still, not even through the law, but through the practice of banks to be, to be kind of uh, suspending shocks, suspending surprise across uh, who will pay? Who will not pay? When when you have a large when you have a group and you group them not by zip code because that would be racist. So you put some whites in it, you put some blacks in it. You end up having here the inequality of the ability to reimburse the mortgage ends up being a system of drainage of white wealth toward other minorities. That is what Frame Games came to lay. And so it is to my big surprise today that I see Brett Weinstein doing a, a defense of Frame Games under his new identity. And I'm like, how, how, what is the difference between me and Frame Games? I mean, we were both, uh, we were both talking to this very same audience. We were doing the same show. We were both talking about the same ideas. So any kind of label you want to attribute to me, you could attribute to Frame Games. And if you want to call me alt-right, you would have to call Frame Games alt-right. If you want to say there are Nazis in my audience, you would have to admit there were Nazis in Frame Games' audience. So what's the difference between me and Frame Games? 
Frame Games is Jewish. I'm white. And it was kind of a special moment of the intern at this, this moment that happened between us two, where we were, we were both uh, discussing about the same ideas that everyone wanted us to discuss. And in a way that was not hateful toward him nor toward me, at equal standing. It was kind of a meeting of two lines of thought that otherwise never interact. The idea of having someone from the Jewish side not playing the game of the intellectual cartel and instead engaging with me was, uh, it was certainly refreshing. It would be refreshing by today's standard, in fact, because I don't know that this happened since something like what me and Frame Games were doing. But w when you see uh, Brett's behavior toward me, and when you compare it uh, to his behavior toward Frame Games, you realize that the one difference between me and Frame Games is extremely well isolated in this case. Like, the one difference between me and Frame Games is Frame Games is Jewish, and today Brett is making a difference of him. But Brett, a uh, couple of weeks ago, wasn't willing to engage with me or talk with me because there were Nazis in my audience. Well, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, Brett, you have some internet story to go through. Go back and check out my streams with Frame Games, and you'll see that uh, Frame Games had Nazis in his audience too, because we had the same audience. We're born together on the internet. We were co-hosting shows. Anyway, that's kind of the side history of all this. But all this to come back to the great contribution of Frame Games. Frame Games came on my show and taught us about all these things, about how there were that there was a new commerce of censorship. There was a new commerce of exploiting the idea of racism. There was a whole cottage industry of you know going after Starbucks. I remember a series against the whole. Starbucks, uh, racism, uh, moral panic. Uh, he had great insight into all these questions, and he was laying out very early, in fact, before it was fully finished, how the censorship industrial complex would be born. And today, today he has uh, reappeared on the internet under the name Mike Benz, and we find that Mike Benz turns out as exposed by the mainstream media hit pieces. Uh, Mike Benz is also like this liar guy who's, who's doing counseling within the, the Republicans and Trump. And uh, not even sure. I, I didn't pay attention to the detail, but basically, he has a mainstream life. Frame Games had a mainstream life. That's what I retain. I, I don't really care about the details because. These articles are so painful to go through. It's like, oh yeah, he, he has also interacted with white nationalist incel uh, J.F. Garyipi. Uh, I, I just can't dig through that much dishonesty and hope to find any facts. And so at some point I'm like, I, I don't give a shit about these articles. Uh, but all of this, yeah, so it is, uh, is Frame Games allowed to go out there and... Uh, and become whoever he wants to become. You know, yes, I think he is. And I think he's making as good of a job in his new persona that he was before. And he is still... Whenever Frame Games came on my show, he always said that anything he would say about the Jews was not inspired in hate. And he always pointed out that he was Jewish. So... The first thing, so there's the question of, has Frame Games been kind of dishonest? Because in his new persona, he made recently a tweet in response to the main, mainstream media hit pieces where he goes really hard on his Jewishness. I mean, to, a, to the point of annoyance, like, I've had my bar mitzvah, but, but Frame Games was always saying these things on my show too. I've had my bar mitzvah, I've had my whatever confirmation afterward. I'm a, but then, so, so all of this is okay. That's still the frame game I know. Uh, 
But then there's a little plus to his recent post. He says what I was doing through these video interventions and these podcast appearances back then can be seen as the greatest act of de-radicalization from Jewish hatred in the history of our civilization, basically. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, but, but he's trying to reframe everything that he's done with us as a appeal to read uh, as a project basically in fact a project that appeared to be somewhat supported and funded by networks of hidden jewish funders and he saw his intervention on the public space then and sees it today as an act of de-radicalization and he says, you know, how much he loves the Jews. He, he loves being part of the Jewish people. And he's a proud Jew. And I'm not sure how we should interpret all of this. Uh, I'm annoyed by some of it. Because uh, first, people have pointed out, I've not been de de-radicalized by frame games. Personally, I've, I haven't. And a lot of people have been answering a lot of people have been answering to his post uh, by saying, well, you know, I haven't been de-radicalized. If anything, Frame Games has awakened me to how radical we will have to be in pursuing an ideology against this rising diversity scam. So... How could we see then his project of de-radicalization? Could we say his project of de-radicalization was failed, was a failure, a failure? Maybe. So here was someone trying to de-radicalize, but in the process of simply establishing a relationship with the right, is... Uh, is arguments ended up, if anything, radicalizing people further in the sense of understanding better just the size of the enemy. Or you can think, is he bullshitting? Is that, is that just a frame game? Some people on the regular chat are saying, frame game playing frame games. <laughs> yes, you could see his uh, recent rebranding as... A frame game, definitely. That's what he's been describing to us. He said there's these games that people play, and if you take the very same event, but you frame it differently, people's cognition is elsewhere suddenly. And the local thing appears differently in a different context. That's exactly what frame game is doing also. He is doing a frame game with his own identity. But then who's framed? Who is being framed here? Is it his current fans who are following him as Mike Benz and who are being presented a, a full kosher view, if you will, of his contribution? In fact, so kosher that he would have been willing to engage with the non-kosher people or material? Is that how we should interpret it? Or are, were we the ones being framed? in that he was merely making displays of knowledge about the left's progression, but really had a ultimately hidden pro-Jewish goal to his contribution. I believe that all of these hypotheses are reasonable. Um, I believe that there's a little bit of everything. The truth is in the middle in this case. Uh, Doubting Thomas says, Jeff, regarding Frame Games de-radicalization claim, this probably influences how Brett distinguishes you from Frame Games. Yeah, but see, but see, that's just the modern Frame Games. That, that's, that's a new thing. As far as what he said to us back in those years, his goal was not to come on my show to de-radicalize my audience. Uh... I think he had a view that some issues in society needed to be addressed 
at the forefront. They needed to be put at the forefront. And I remember very often he was saying, my goal is that if I could change the world tomorrow morning, what I would do, I would make it so that every single white person can be as attached to their identity as a Jewish person. That that when when you when you dig into frame games and you are what, what's motivating you and everything, that's what he would drop to you. That that was at the bottom of his heart. That was my job as an interviewer to get this out of him. And so let let let, let us think about this statement, which he was doing very often. Uh, he was often reminding us. My goal is that white identity politics becomes as regularized, as normalized as Jewish identity politics. That doesn't sound that doesn't sound like the it's not the exact same thing as what he says today. What he says today is I want to I wanted to de-radicalize the right. But from the perspective of a of a leftist of, of, of someone like Brett Weinstein, the frame games of the past by pushing for a form of white identity politics would have been a radicaliz ra radicalizing form, a uh, ra radicalizing contributor to the internet, because from their perspective, any form of racial consciousness for white people is dangerous. And so I'm uncomfortable in face of the whole thing. I'm uncomfortable into, for what is not being said here. I'm, I was uncomfortable to talk about all this because I didn't want to be uh, exposing a next guest. But I feel that it, it doesn't quite fit. The, the frame games reframing of today is not the exact same thing that he would say back in those years. There's a little extra, there's a little, all right, I chose my side. And that side is the side of Israel, and that side is the side of let's de-radicalize these whites. Frame Games had been explicitly pushing for white identity politics in 2017. And my question to him, I know, I know how talented you are at reframing Mike Benz. But my question to you is, today in 2023, would you be able to say the same thing? Would you be able to say, you know what? Yes, white identity politics is desirable. Or was this a lie? Was this a frame game? Were you framing us? Or are you now framing them? Or are you so confused and are you such a people pleaser? that ultimately you have ended up framing yourself. That is my question to Mike Benz, Frame Games. Much love to my old friend, but it's, uh, it's always worrying to see people drift and not know. And Frame Games is a guy who's capable of clarity. Bird Flu says, let's be honest, many are hedging their bets based on who pays their bills, cowards we call them in the scene. Uh, let's see here, because this is fascinating. It's, it's an intersection of my story of life and Brett, Weinstein, Brett Weinstein's story of life that I didn't expect would happen. Let us also point out the interesting possibly just now uh just to warn you brett weinstein is about to lay out the craziest conspiracy theory and i want to preempt what he's about to say by indicating to you think about it think about what would have to be true for brett's loose suggestion here to be correct brett lays out a conspiracy theory, and I'm going to say it in straighter terms than he does, but I, I believe it's the essence of what he lays out as at least a possibility. The conspiracy theory would go as follows. There's a bunch of pro-Palestine people who control our media.
I'm going to I'm going to try to say it without laughing. There's a bunch of pro-Palestine people who are in control of America right now. <clears throat> they knew that the Palestinians were preparing attacks against Israel. So they knew and Israel didn't know. They knew that Mike Benz was a Jew, but that he would be, uh, but that he would be not sympathetic enough. <coughs> that that he would be, that he would be a good target to smear, because he, he made a couple of good arguments against censorship lately, and it's time to crash down on Mike Benz. Because by arguing against censorship, he could have potentially contributed to censoring the pro-Palestinian people on the internet. Or he, he, could, he, he could contribute to a release of this censorship, that is. And therefore, this conspiratorial group of pro-Palestinian people took control of the media and forced a hit piece against Mike Benz with the goal of oppressing a potentially powerful Jewish voice <clears throat> in, in, a, in a media that, that is hostile to Jewish interest. This is the conspiracy theory you're about, <laughs> you're about to hear. James says, it's always been the Palestinians. The conspiracy gets so deep. <laughs> You know, I imagine a graphical representation of this conspiracy theory, and I imagine Palestinian Arabs just playing with playing with puppets. <laughs> you know how Alex Jones had reached the conclusion, they want you to believe it's the Jews. They want you to believe it's the Jews, so they use Jews, but the real the real puppet master is a bunch of globalists who have decided to scapegoat the Jews. Now, uh, that is Alex Jones' level of craziness. Brett Weinstein is at the level... No, no, it's not the globalists that are the puppet masters. The puppet masters, believe it or not, are the Palestinians. Just coincidental fact that Mike Benz has just faced a, um, a character assassination. Uh, that when? has made uh, just a now few days, a few mm -hmm. days before the attack. And what was that character assassination? The idea of associating his past alongside me. That was basically what the character assassination was. And so it is possible that that is happenstance. Um, Mike has done a great. So it's possible that it's a coincidence job of revealing the censorship industrial complex and uh, they would of course have an incentive to take him down at any moment but wow. the coincidence of him being uh, hobbled um, just before this attack in which the censorship was going to kick into high gear is at least worth noticing well uh, there's a couple of interesting things here it seems that Brett Weinstein is already expecting or is already talking about censorship will happen. Censorship will happen on the Israel-Palestine question. Uh, it's, it could be what he's referring to. Perhaps he knows something about upcoming rule changes. And I've predicted this myself also. So it's not particularly out of the ordinary to be uh, predicting that, yeah, YouTube is going to go, uh, going to go uh, against uh, the Israel-Palestine question. And most likely, if you want my opinion, they will most likely go to censor the pro-Palestinian side. We've already seen people being tempted, Elon Musk critical of BLM for posting photos of parachutes and the parachutes were probably referring to how some of the uh, activists, the, the, the militants of Palestine, uh, entered the Israeli territory. Uh, but we have here, and Brett had been making a tweet about this. He had t talked about 
there was a relatively loose coalition quasi-forming against censorship, and it has been destroyed. So he's very disappointed that we can't continue on the whole road that he's been, and he's been talking about it every day, the whole COVID and censorship around COVID and that kind of stuff. The, the, the world has moved too fast for Brett Weinstein. But here, what he lays out is a belief that there would be anti-Jewish voices having intentionally put a hit piece onto Mike Benz in preparation for the Israel-Palestine conflict. But the problem is, for this to be the case, it would have to be the case that first the, the, the media is controlled by a significant pro-Palestine entity, Second, that they knew about attacks that the Israeli intelligence service is telling us they did, didn't even know about it. So how is it that you get a bunch of journalists, uh, honestly, a bunch of Jewish journalists, who would know about Palestinian attacks, but somehow it wouldn't spread into Israeli intelligence? That is very weird. Uh, and most importantly, what this whole detour of the mind that Brett Weinstein is doing here is seeks to justify is to blind himself to the obvious. Frame Games has been doxxed because it was sympathetic to white people. Frame Games has been doxxed not because he's Jewish, not because of a Jewish conflict in Israel. He has been doxxed because he has been too sympathetic for to white people who are hated by the people who control the media in the U.S. So this whole conspiracy has only one function. It's not related to reality. It's not related to identifying the truth. It's re related to Brett's, Brett's uh, obligatory kind of uh, feeling that he appears to have to ignore the fact that most hit pieces are targeted based on white identitarian politics, which is exactly how he would want it to be, because he is an absolute enemy of white identitarian politics. And so if you tell me, if you tell me that for years it's not been Jews that have been subject to censorship, it's white people standing for white people's rights. Now, you tell me that there's a guy named Frame Games. His characteristic that's special about him is that, yes, he's a Jew, but he's also a, someone who has been involved in the white identitarian community of political discussion. What are the chances that suddenly the censorship industrial complex and the whole media apparatus that writes it pieces what are the chances that they're targeting him because he's a Jew and he's going to be tr too pro-Israel before an Israeli-Palestine conflict? Or, and, and he, he would be the first Jew to ever be censored for that reason. Or, Frame Games is just one of the hundreds of people who are being hit pieced and smeared and censored for the very same reason as his colleagues and the people he has appeared on podcast of have been censored and hit peace. It's because he was too sympathetic to white people. And he just happens to be a Jew, but that's not the reason for why he's targeted. And therefore, his attachment to Israel is not the problem, nor is an enmity toward Palestine. He's being censored like we've been censored. He's being censored like... Everyone he spoke to is being uh, written it pieces about because the leftist media has always been extremely interested at squashing, at putting back into the bud the idea of white rights, white identity. And they're just continuing on their pattern. DK Shadow says parsimony. Yes, the other hypothesis, the one that Brett lays out, is, is an absolute violation. I mean, Brett just raped parsimony here. Come on, come back to, come back to uh, proper thinking, Brett. I know you can do it. <laughs>